Hello everyone! Hello and good evening and Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy whatever heathen holiday it is that, uh, that you're all celebrating today. And uh, welcome. We're going to do Starlight Celebration in Eorzea. Speaking of filthy heathens. Um, I'm in my Christmas regalia. I feel like I'm appropriately dressed. And this year's Starlight I'm super excited for because it has a, uh, a very special tie-in to a character in 1.0, uh, which is one of uh, Oda's absolute favorites and uh, someone that a lot of people have been asking questions about. So, it's going to be great. Let's do it. Oh, I want to stay in that filter. That was a nice filter. <laughs> uh, Siva's trying to get my attention in the FC chat. Merry Christmas, Siva. Am... Garanji. What kind of name is that? Tis the season, and I'm Garanji seeks a kind-hearted soul to help her work miracles. Now, I, I'll give you guys a quick uh, rundown. For those of you who aren't sure what the Starlight Celebration is about, at the beginning of the Dragon Song War, uh, there were a number of terrible battles against the Dravanian Horde, which resulted in a whole lot of orphans being produced. And... Freezing winter came over, a freezing winter night, and a lot of the uh, a lot of the dragoons and other soldiers uh, who were not technically allowed to do so decided that they were going to let these orphan children into their barracks so they wouldn't die of uh, of cold out in the in the cold Curthus air. And uh, yeah, that was the first sort of instance of it. And the the commander of the barracks, who had a big snowy white beard, uh, came to be known as the Saint of Nemea, which is why we talk about, uh, about the saint. Um, now, this uh, tradition was continued a few times, and uh, when the orphans grew up, who were the original recipients of the, uh, the, good, the good grace of uh, the, the fighters in the barracks, they sort of took it upon themselves to carry the tradition forward and uh, dressed up in the in the red regalia and started handing out presents to orphaned boys and girls every year, uh, claiming to be working for the uh, the Saint of Nemea. So, that's how we get it. That's how we get our Christmas tie-in. I mean, Starlight tie-in. PvP hype, Yara Glam. Yeah. I think Square Enix needs to make better lore for the holiday events. I think it's nice. I think it's nice. I think it's cute. So, this one is going to be a very special one. And we're going to find out why, hopefully. Why, if it isn't my favorite miracle worker from Starlight's Path? Might you be so kind as to lend me your aid once more? It would mean the world to the children. As you know, the Starlight Celebration is the time to celebrate the children of the These realm, our hope, and our future. As a Starlight Celebrant, it is my sworn duty to see happiness and good cheer duly doled out to all the boys and girls, particularly those whose daily lives afford them few reasons to smile. To that end, I've planned a special delivery to the younglings in the children's ward at Throndale Throneastry. Jeez, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? But I fear things have hit a snag. The parcel has vanished. Oh! Why are you surprised by the voice, Sib? You should not... You should not be surprised by the voice. It's gonna, I think people are gonna um, have a fit when they see this, the voices that go with the, sorry, the faces that go with the voices. I trust it has only been misplaced and not stolen. What black-hearted wretch would deny those poor children a rare moment of good cheer? I would search for it myself, but I fear my duty to the celebrant keep me from leaving my post. Might you be so kind as to go looking in my stead? You know what, I would be delighted to, am. Um, oh, thank you. With you on the job, I'm sure the children will be beaming with smiles within bells. The package is a large box engraved with the mark of Frondale's Fronathry. One of my assistants says they saw a boy toting a similar box at the Ruby Road Exchange. Perhaps you might begin your search there. Did you find the parcel? Pray deliver it directly to the registrar at Frondale's. You have my heartfelt gratitude for your assistance, and remember, it's not just me that's counting on you to work miracles. No, Am, it's not just you, it's all the children! Now, I don't, I don't want to make um, 
I don't want to make tasteless jokes about the soldiers bringing little children into their barracks on the cold winter nights to keep them warm. Uh, but, uh... Oh shit, I just did make one, didn't I? I just did make a joke. Ethis, are you planning on doing anything after this event? Yes, we're, we're going to listen to the primals together after this event. Now, um, I should apologize to everyone on YouTube. Obviously, I didn't, I didn't even state it, but we're streaming right now. Um, I'm going to be uploading this on YouTube later. I'm going to, I'm, I'm trying this. I'm sure some of you might not like it, uh, but this is pretty much my recording process. Anyway, the only difference is you might see some chat and you'll, you'll see my dumb, my dumb Muppet face on a webcam. Um, Ruby Road Exchange. Oh, of course, that's up top. I, I don't know why I started thinking of the markets for some reason. That's up top. Uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys can get behind that. I'm, I'm tentatively, tentatively trying out to see if uh, we can, you know, get two birds stoned at once. And maybe this can be a thing that we do uh, from time to time with quests and events and, and fun little things. Here we go. He's hiding right there. Um, no, because Yoshida literally said when he came out with the shirt, he said that he likes the Spider-Man films, particularly, particularly the Sam Raimi films. Sam Raimi. Anyway. Hey, hey! Wh where are you taking that crate? I hear it there for a reason, you know? Is that a little Ellison boy older? It is too. It what? I saw the mark on it and assumed it belonged to one of the physicians from the children's ward. I was only trying to have a little fun, I promise. I, I didn't mean to cause any trouble, honest. At least not for you. You just... Just take it and do whatever you want with it. And don't tell anyone you saw me here, okay? I don't want to get in trouble again. You little shit. You guys hearing bird noises? We got bird noises in the background. We got burbs! It's an alliteration joke in Japanese, which they love. Everyone loves alliteration. What are you talking about? Was well, it Blue Mage mentioned as being basically impossible without being a solo only job? No, I can think of. Oh my god, Hypes. Hypes, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, give me a second here, guys. Uh, was, there, was there a message with that? Merry Christmas, XIV Cactua. Merry Christmas to you too, Hypes. Merry bloody Christmas. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. I'm, uh... You're, you're filling me with holiday bliss. Now, this is interesting. That, that, um... That... There are a bunch of Elzen at the Fronistry, and it's like the only place that you see them in, uh... In all of Uldar, isn't it? Holy shit, Hypes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Greetings, adventurer. Hmm? You have a delivery for me? I certainly do. A small wooden crate emblazoned with the seal of Frondale's Fronistry. Do we actually know what the seal is? Is there a seal on the door? I don't think so. Thank the heavens. When the goods the celebrant spoke of did not arrive at the designated time, I feared this starlight would be a lonesome one for our poor children. Pray tell, wherever did it disappear to? Am I going to tell him? I see. Thank you for your honesty, and fear not, we will not punish the boy. The younglings here do not live easy lives, but they have good hearts. I shall do what I can to see that they have all, that they all have cause to smile today. On that subject, might I ask one more favor of you? I realize we have troubled you enough already, but I'm certain it would bring the children no end of delight. You would be, not be averse to helping us. Pray speak with me again. Oh shit, we're gonna starlight robe. We're gonna wear a starlight robe without any pants now. Uh, what do you mean unable to move item? Get that in there. Get that in there. Get that, get that juicy item in there. Oh yeah. Oh. oh. Not having pants isn't that exciting, so I guess I will put the boots on. Alright, let's have another talk. Think of the children. The Ravenhead Registrar would make a special request of you. Hmm. So will you lend us your aid? I cannot thank you enough, friend. As for the task at hand, I would deliver these presents to the children, but I fear they would find little joy and wonder in receiving them from the fusty physician whose face they see every day. Oh, dead alliteration. Oh. But one of the saint's little helpers, on the other hand. Behold, I have the gub right here. And I'm certain it would most become you. 
Sure does. My colleague by the door would be happy to show you into the children's ward whenever you desire. Meanwhile, I must look into the matter of that mischief-making boy. Thank you again, friend. When you see the children's smiles, you will know just how much your kindness meant to them. Aww. Aww. He stole, he stole a present from the sick children? No, one of the, it was one of the sick children stealing a package that he didn't realize was presents for the other sick children. Um, so he was accidentally Grinch. Uh, Grinch confirmed. The Registrar has told me everything. We thank you for your charity, kind adventurer. It would be my pleasure to show you within. Uh, why are you wearing a face mask there? These kids are going to be infectious as fuck, you guys. Oh, shit. What have I signed up for? Oh, man. <laughs> Look at... Look at old Jipoli here. Actually, he, um... He's got some scary eyes, actually. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Anyway. Get out of here, Sinner. Get the, get the fuck out of here, Sinner. This is my show. Genteel child. Well, if it isn't a little helper. Who are you calling little? Might you have a present for me? Oh, please say that you do. I sure do, you little bastard. The contents of this festively wrapped parcel are sure to warm the hearts of the children. My heartfelt thanks to you. I can only hope that the spinner hears my prayers that I might spend next starlight with my family. Kid. I've got news for you. Your family's not coming back. Anyway. Coughing child. Ugh. Alright. I'm gonna get a little bit of distance to, to, from this. <laughs> a little bit of distance from this one. <laughs> Pardon me. Do you have <laughs> something <laughs> for me? Uh... Yeah, I just like gingerly just uh, throw it over to her. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, uh, I'm so happy. I'll go better by next starlight. Just you wait and see. Jeez. That's fucking brutal, isn't it? Dainty child. Now, I'm just staying away from her because she's a fucking potato. Why, hello there, little helper. Might you pretend to have a present for little old me? Guys, that's not a child. That's just a regular fucking Lullafell that wants a present. And is posing <laughs> as a sick child in the children's ward to get free shit. Oh, but you are truly too kind. I feel my letters would not reach the spinner from here, but I see now my worries were for naught. You fucking sucker. You, you dumb, dumb adventurer. Just as I thought, he is nowhere to be found. Doubtless the boy the adventurer spoke of was... Yes, it must be so. That's the joke, dot JPEG. Really? I haven't heard anyone make... Shit. I haven't heard anyone else make that joke. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, that was an original and clever witticism. Hardworking healer, okay. Uh, did I miss one of the wee bastards? Oh, I did too. Pallid child. A little helper! Do you truly have a present for me? I must be dreaming. You sure are, kid. You have fever. You're going crazy. Oh, thank you so much. This is the best starlight ever. You have successfully delivered a gift to every youngling on the premises. One present, however, still remains. Oh, oh, oh my. Okay, let's see if we're going to find out who this registrar actually is. You have my thanks, adventurer. Hearing the laughter of the little ones, I see you served as a most splendid little helper. But pray tell, do you perchance still have one present in your possession? I sure do. I suspected as much. Currently we have five younglings residing with us, but one of them, a boy by the name of Rivere, seems to have slipped outside unattended. No doubt this is the selfsame boy you met not long ago. A boy who stole away with our starlight gifts. But whatever would possess him to do such a thing? This is no time for idle speculation. We must find him before he comes to harm. You'll aid in our search, won't you, friend? I mean, I guess. Once again, I'm in your debt. 
Let us begin our search at the Ruby Road Exchange where you last saw him. I will await you there. Very good. Can you visor the cowl? I don't know. I don't think so because it's a chess piece. If I could visor it, it would have replaced my beard. FC Mates has that potato look exactly. The jokes have never stopped for us. That's fantastic. I love that. <laughs> Alright, good night, Siva. Sorry, Siva's probably already gone. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening. Hello, Otto. Happy Christmas. Rivia! You little Grinch! Erder, Palace of the Dead Spam. These babies just saved this lame ass party! Thank what you for that, host that? guy. Oh, father, father, can we stop at the stores before we go home? We told your mother you would be home by the next bell, did we not? You wouldn't want to make her sad now, would you? I, I suppose you're right, father. Well, I suppose she would not be devastated if we stopped off at one stall and bought her a little gift. What do you say? I thought we were getting gifts from me. Father. But who goes? Oh, you're that adventurer from before. I I've been a good boy since then, I promise. Well, except for running away, I suppose. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cause you trouble. Between you and me, I, I don't particularly want to go back, but... I wouldn't want to get you in trouble too, so I will. Happy Christmas, gentlemen of Lane. Happy Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. Happy Starlight. Um, where is he? Where is our old friend? You're not looking very hard, are you? You found Revere and oh, we just skipped a bunch of dialogue. <laughs> Whoopsies! All right, sorry about that. Hasting strip. Okay. Anyway, we know what he was gonna say. Good work, Ethos. How many times must I say this, Revere? I do not mean to scold you, merely to keep you safe. Just promise me that you will not go running off like that again. Everyone cares for you here, and this behavior of yours causes no end of worry. Liar, nobody cares about me here. I, I could die tomorrow, no one would shed a tear, so just leave me be, will you? Little bitch. R Revere! I'm probably saying his uh, name completely wrong. Dear heavens, I'm sorry you had to see that, friend. I know not what the boy is thinking these days. Revere! Oh no. He real sick. Worry not, my friend. The boy's life is in no danger. I've already seen to his treatment. He should be back on his feet ere long. And yet, it is fortunate we were close at hand. Why, if he had collapsed but a few bells earlier, he's own out on the streets. If you have a moment, I would speak to you in private. Pray come with me. Do any of you recognize him yet? Revere's illness is not an especially complex one, but one of the herbs used in its treatment is quite rare and not easily come by. As such, his time in the children's ward has dragged on longer than any of us would have hoped. Moon after moon spent in the company of strangers would not be easy on any child, let alone one as sensitive as Revere. And yet, he has fought his illness with admirable courage and nary a word of complaint. That is, until recently. For the life of me, I cannot fathom what has turned him into such a rebellious, sullen child. I only wish to help him, and yet I am at a complete loss for ideas as how to how I might do so. Alas and alack, whatever am I to do? Well, he was right, not a single tear. 
Final relic, how dare you? That's so rude. I'm assuming all NPCs in this event are just from 1.0. Well, this bloke certainly is. The Ravenhead Registrar's Lost to the Depths of Despair. Oh, look at that. We got Starlight Celebration Orchestra and Roll. That's nice. It's a pretty tune. Alas, alas and alack. Is there nothing I can do to bring succor to the poor boy? Am I doomed to stand idly by as he descends further into a pit of hopelessness, self-loathing and despair? <gasps> Ignore that. My apologies. My emotions got the better of me for a moment. I often tell the children that even the most potent herbs and potions will not avail the patient who does not possess the firm belief that his condition will indeed improve. This is true for myself as much as it is true of my charges. Sadly, in the case of poor Revere, he seems to have all but given up hope. I cannot fathom what happened. He used to be such a sweet, sanguine child. I beg of your friend, please, pray help me help the boy. Might you investigate into the matter that you might ascertain what ails his heart so? Thank you ever so much, my friend. I shall go speak with my colleagues at the Fronistry to see if they might have any insight. Mayhap you could speak with the other children. After your efforts as a little helper, I imagine they'd not be shy to share with you anything they might know. Hmm. What about you? This is, this is the greedy little blighter was like, Alright, cough it up. You would ask him to revere? Oh, very well. I saw him reaching under his bed the other day as if he were hiding something. Of course, I did not peek. How do you know that mother and father is still me with the finest of manners? Hmm. Okay, let's keep our distance here. <laughs> Revere? <laughs> he hasn't been too happy lately. Who can blame him? When I think of how long I've been here so far from home, sometimes I can't help but <laughs> cry too. Okay. And you're just standing there mocking that poor girl, aren't you? I was still Revere leading a letter the other day with a terrible grimace on his face. May have something in the world upset him. Or well, perhaps his sickness is acting up again. You planted him a, a, some bloody hate mail, didn't you? You little shit. Yeah, we shit. What about you? Revere, now that you mention it, I haven't seen him smile much lately. We used to laugh together all the time. I wonder what happens. Hmm. I'm gonna search under his bed. What do you guys think we're gonna find under his bed? We're just going to find like a whole bunch of like dead pices. A bunch of Tonberry heads. Oh, we're not going to read the letter, are we? We're going to read the letter. Not all potatoes are bad. No, but most of them are. A letter addressed to Revere that you found hidden beneath the boy's bed. Oh dear. It's just going to be <laughs> just porn. Just a bunch of, bunch of really visceral, ugly porn. Ah, welcome back, my friend. Have you gleaned any insights as to what ails Paul Revere's heart? Uh, maybe. Moogle testicles. Maybe. What have we here? Ah, uh, a letter to Revere from his father. Well, I'm loath to intrude on the privacy of my ward. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Let's see now. My dearest son, I promised I would be home for starlight, but I fear that business calls. Pray forgive your father for this broken promise, and know that I shall return to your side as soon as I am able. Oh, shit! Uh, I should have known. Revere's father is a merchant by trade, and his travels often take him to distant shores. A few things instill the boy with hope like his father's visits. They've grown increasingly rare. Doubtless he prayed to the spinner for his father's return for starlight, and was devastated that his prayers went unanswered. This letter is the cause of his recent malaise, yeah, there is little we could do to lift his spirits. Unless we could somehow find the man and convince him to... Wait, I believe I know someone who might just be able to come to our aid at such a time as this. I will go on ahead and investigate the matter. Ray, join me anon at the Husting Strip. I'll explain there. Is it the Warrior of Light? Love it how so many people behave like they don't know who we are. When is he going to bloody tell us who he is? Because I know who he is. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I know who he's talking about. So there's a certain man who, um... 
often contributes to our starlight festivities. And it's not that man. It's not Lollarito. Ah, friend, your timing is impeccable. With some help from an old acquaintance, I was able to ascertain the whereabouts of the poor boy's father. Acquaintance of whom I speak? An old friend of my departed mother's, and one with a vast web of informants and information at his disposal. He is more than happy to assist. The right price, needless to say. So you paid off old Lollarito, did you? But you needn't concern yourself with that, friend. What's important is that we've found our man. As my source tells it, Revere's father is staying over in Limsa, awaiting a vessel that will now take him across the seas to Razad Han in the east. If we depart now, we might still catch him before he sets sail. I would go myself, but you must understand, I simply could not leave the poor children entrusted to my care. And so I must call upon your generosity again this starlight season. Pray travel to Limsa in my stead, that Revere's starlight wish may yet come true. I don't see if the old man's decided to ditch him and he's not coming home for Starlight. I don't know how we're going to be able to convince him otherwise, but, uh... I suppose we'll see, won't we? The glasses dude is from 1.0. Yes, that's true. This fucking Elzen. This fucking Elzen wearing all dog gear. Hmm? Why, well, yes, I am Revere's father. Whatever is the matter. Something happened to my boy. Uh, yeah, you didn't show up for Starlight, you mofo. It, it cannot be. I knew the boy was looking forward to a Starlight reunion, but to think a single broken promise would ravage his heart so. You're a bad father. You, you must understand, friend. I want nothing more than to fly back to Uldar to reveal side, but I simply cannot. No matter of most pressing calls to me across the sea. I, it is not merely a chance at profit and fortune that calls me eastward. I have at long last found a reliable source for the rare herb needed to cure my poor boy's disease. Oh, I immediately take that back. If that is in fact the truth, I immediately take that back, Revere's father. I'm sorry. If I do not sail out in the next ferry, it may be moons, even years, till I find an opportunity like this. And so, as much as it pains my heart, I must go. I know not if it will suffice, but pray deliver this to my boy in my stead. It is a memento I had meant to give him when I returned from Razat Han. Take it to him and tell him this. Even when his journeys carry him to distant lands, your father's heart is ever with you. And with that, I must prepare for my journey. Thank you, my friend, and a happy starlight to you. All right, he's a good father. He's just not one that knows what children are like very well, evidently. Well, that's nice. That's a nice resolution. What up, nerds? What up, Shiwu? Happy Christmas to you. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. I'm not a cactus. You're a cactus. Uh, happy Starlight, my friend. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy... Um, what else should people celebrate around this time of year? Forgive me for being ignorant, but I truly, I truly have no idea. Uh, Chamber of Rules. Okay, you're gonna tell us who you are now. You return, friend, but you return alone. Did the man elude your search? No, he did not. The Yule. I see. I can only hope that this gift will serve to rouse Revere from his doldrums. Pray take it to the boy, my friend. He should be back on his feet any time now, and in his recent behavior, I suspect that he would rather receive the present from you than from me. Here you go, you mapey little shit. Oh, you're back. I've been a good boy, I pro- What, you have something for me? I sure do! A present? 
The only thing I asked for Starlight was... Present from Father? His heart is always with me, you say? That's a stupid lie. If his heart was with me, then why isn't he here like he promised he would be? <laughs> Please, Revere, you must understand. Your father cares for you more than anyone we know. Then why didn't he come back? Why is he sailing off to some distant land? Is coin so much more important to him than his own son? It's precisely because you are so important to him that he sails east, my dear boy. He sails out in search of the rare herb that will cure you of all ills. You might live as a family once more. You're just making things up, aren't you? I swear on my own father's grave that I am not. This adventurer heard as much from your father's own mouth, didn't you, friend? It'd be so funny if I was like, nah, kid, you, your father's a deadbeat, he's ditching you. So, daddy doesn't hate me after all. On the contrary, Revere, your father just wants to see you well again, as we all do. Will you promise that you'll stop fighting us and work with us to overcome your sickness? It, you bet I will. I'll get over this and be back living happy with my dad in no time. Just you watch me. Oh, Wah. <laughs> now that's the Revere I know. <clears throat> might we speak in private for a moment, my friend? I'll be at the front desk if you might spare a moment. Oh, Kamikaze, welcome back. I hope you're all right. I hope you're all right. It's an emotional time of year, I understand. You know what, Nat? You're just a... You're just a cynical old bitch, aren't you? <gasps> D'Amelio! You insufferable dolt. I swear, can I not leave my bumbling erstwhile apprentice alone for half a bell without him turning the cauldron over and making a right mess of everything? Master Severian. Sev his name, isn't it? Rogets, thank you very much, sir. Follow Welcome to the Chub Club, my friend. Whatever brings you to the children's ward at this hour of the day. Are you deaf, dumb, or you simply enjoy being intentionally obtuse? As I just said, you spec... Spectacular fool, I saw you running about town like a chocobo with its head removed from its body, and I deigned to interrupt my far more important research to see if my surpassing knowledge might be needed to rescue you from whatever miserable plight you've surely inflicted upon yourself. That, that is most kind of you, Master Severian. I am pleased to inform you that, thanks to the charity of this kind adventurer, the situation was resolved a few brief moments ago. I'm quite sorry to have uh, troubled you so. What's this? Your face is unfamiliar to me, and I'm not particularly inclined to waste my time getting to know you, but whoever you are, it would appear that you're more competent to my erstwhile apprentice's job than he is. <laughs> right, yeah, he's a mad scientist. Yes, my apprentice. He may be a sappy sentimental fool, but I suppose it's something to be said that the children's ward hasn't entirely collapsed under his stewardship. Though I dare say my regular visits have something to do with that, wouldn't you say, Director? But, Master Severi, your guidance is always most welcome, but should you be taking this much time away from... Good gods, D'Amelio! Why ever are you wasting my invaluable time when you know full well that pressing experiments demand my constant and undivided attention? <laughs> I swear the next competent apprentice I find will be the first... And then he just walks out mid-sentence. Mmm! Forgive me, my friend. Am I not introducing myself sooner? My name is D'Amelio, and... Uh, is it D'Amelio? 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 I'm not sure how to say it. D'Amelio! And I serve as director of the institution. Though in fairness, this is simply a position I inherited from my departed parents. One that I even now struggle to prove myself worthy of. Nevertheless, on behalf of all my colleagues and the children placed in my charge, not the least of which is dear Revere, I offer you my most sincere thanks for the boundless kindness and charity you've shown us this starlight season. In my own childhood, I was a patient here myself. I suffered from a most curious ailment. Whenever I drifted off to slumber, I knew not when I would again wake. It was only through the benevolence and goodwill of those around me that my condition did at long last abate. 
And so it was that when I came of age, I resolved to carry on my dear parents' life work, that I might do my part to bring succor and solace to those in the greatest of need. A simple motive, mayhap, but one that more than sufficed. But I've rambled on long enough. I thank you once again for your kindness, friend. You're welcome in the ward whenever you desire. I'm sure your presence would bring smiles to the faces of the children. Okay, story time. I should explain this. Uh, I should explain this to you guys. I think. Now, yeah, that's that's right. That's right, Cersei. Um, now, Darmelio was an NPC from 1.0. Um, he was very central to the Alchemist quest, where the uh, the the Alchemist uh, master, the master of the Alchemist Guild in 1.0, who who's not obviously master anymore. Uh, was his father, and uh, he was this wee lad who had fallen into this mysterious coma um, after, as you were saying, he was constantly falling asleep for, you know, days and days on end, no one could rouse him, and he eventually fell into this sort of long-lasting coma um, from which nobody could rouse him, and a lot of the alchemist quests were actually about trying to find, you know, various cures for him. Now, his mother, he also referred to, uh, was uh, Aeoland Quiveron, a, who was uh, a member of the syndicate and owned the Fronistry. Now, she died in the Calamity, or at least we believe she died in the Calamity, but there is also some suspicion around that uh, that she was assassinated by probably Telegi Adelegi. And you can actually find her in Palace of the Dead in floors uh, 50 to 200 as the putrid plutocrat. She's wandering around saying, Damelio, please open your eyes. It's very sad, but uh, it's it's another nice bit of closure for an NPC from 1.0 that a lot of people have been asking about and wondering about, and um, yeah, it's a really it's a really really sad but really sweet uh, starlight event this year. I think that's really nice. Mm. Here you go. Daily quest is now available from Damelio and the Children's Ward. Now, what does he have us do? Starlight story. Domelio beams an exultant smile at your return. So what we do here now, I believe, is he wants us to tell stories to the children. Now, this this also ties in to 1.0. Um, Domelio was a really bright, you know, cheery young lad that sort of kept the spirits up of all the other children that were in here um, while he was, you know, in, in the brief periods where he was awake. And he would tell this story to the other children that he could never finish because he uh, he fell into this coma, and um, and all the children were you know really really upset that they couldn't finish this story. So one of the missions in 1.0 was to actually um, go and work out what the rest of this story was, and it turned out to be uh, the first time we heard the boy and the dragon gay. Which is another interesting one. But uh, Demelio here, Stock. Thank you so much for host. Can we please have a shout out for for Stock while I'm telling this story? Um, so, yeah, that's that. That was that was all very sad. Um, and once again, after Dullamud fell, we had no idea what became of Demelio. We know both of his parents are dead. He was just talking about his father's grave. Uh, again, his mother can be seen wandering around in the in the palace of the dead. She doesn't. She doesn't know what's become of him. She doesn't know that he's gotten better, which is very upsetting. I'm glad it's great. It actually goes back and wraps up old storylines. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I think it is really nice. It's it's uh, very much, you know, we got we got Thalman reappearing as Rostens Thal in the Machinist quest line. Uh, we got a wrap up with Travanche and the, the whole Swallowtail Rome arc uh, with Alexander. Anyway. Yes, I'll spare you a few brief moments. In your travels across the realm, surely you have seen wondrous sights of which the children in my care could scarcely dream. It would be an ever so special starlight gift to them if they could regale, if you could regale them, excuse me, with a tale of your adventures. What do you say? All right. Oh, and thank you, my friend. I, s I am certain your story will bring them no end of wonder and joy. I must gather the children in the innermost room. Pray meet us there when you are ready to tell your tale. Alright. 
voice acting is super expensive. Well, it's super expensive because uh, because voice actors don't get like a steady stream of work. You know, you're not working nine to five every day. So the cost you need to sort of hire yourself out at uh, is quite exorbitant. Otherwise, they just can't feed themselves, you know. Anyway. Revere. That's him, everyone. So what story do you tell us today? My friends and I do love a good tale. That's a good question. What story are we going to tell, boys and girls? Oh my goodness. The funs and yeah, fun and games, beast wondrous and rare, limsa gradania, ulda. Great nature today is really the menace of an empire property. Let's tell them the dragon song bar. Let's tell them of the end. I think this is quite poignant. Let's tell them of the end of that conflict which started the Starlight Celebration. And then I took my spear and I rammed it right up Nidhogg's booty hole. Thank you, friend. Why, that was one of the most exciting stories I've ever heard. Well, everyone, I told you his stories would be the best. Indeed you did, Revere. Friend, your tale was such a rousing one that when I closed my eyes for a moment, I could swear I was journeying at your side. As is oft the case, joyous times pass swiftest of all, and the hour grows late. Well, say you rest here for the night, friend. This room is empty at the moment. You have more than earned yourself a respite. I shall see you on the morrow. Aww. Oh, oh, that's lewd. <laughs> Got a bit of a bit of a panty shot about this there. Oh my. Oh, hey there. <laughs> I trust this starlight season finds you well, my friends. I, Emmerich de Borel, Lord Commander of the Temple Knights of Ishgard, have come to bestow upon you a most special gift. As you well know, the observance of starlight traces its origins to my homeland, which remains as a much beloved tradition to this day. I've always been quite fond of the season myself, though I must confess that as colors go, I am somewhat partial to blue. Nonetheless, it is an honor and a pleasure to celebrate this starlight with you. So, as not to disturb your slumber, I shall leave your gift beneath the tree. Be well, my friend! Oh my god. That... That's what I want for Christmas. That's what I want for Christmas beneath my tree, you guys. <laughs> oh my. <gasps> It's really there! It's a starlight miracle! Oh, isn't that nice? And I'm probably not going to have the inventory space for it. Vidobsu, I will get to your question in just a moment. Saint Seft! Saint Seft? Saint Sent Gift. And what is it? A gift that was waiting for you under the starlight tree upon waking from a most remarkable dream. Oh my! Oh, I think we got the censored version of that dream, boys and girls. Good morning to you, friend. Did you... Hmm? You say there was something waiting for you under the tree? Yes. Yes, there was. It's just like a... Like a mold of... Emmerich's very... Uh, you know what? Forget that. Well, well. Might it be the miracles of foot and the saint of Nemea himself has visited us to personally bestow a gift on one of his favorite little helpers. Now again, as I was saying before, the saint of Nemea is the title that has been bequeathed to the original uh, commander of the knight's barracks, which first allowed the children to, uh, to hide under the soldiers' red coats on that terrible, bitter winter night. He had a big white beard and was probably a rotund gentleman. He sat up. That's what I'm saying. I'll spell it out for you. <laughs> but forgive my jest. The children were so stirred by your tale that they simply insisted that they return the favor in some way. I was all too happy to oblige. Pray accept it as a humble token of gratitude from all of us at the children's ward for the kindness you have shown us this season. In your dreams, you say? Oh, that is most fascinating indeed. Mayhap the sound of me tiptoeing into your room at night stirred your imagination as you slumbered. Ooh. Or mayhap, most suffice to say, that this is a magical season. 
And I would not be the least bit surprised if the spinner herself sought to repay you for the miracles you have worked. Oh, at any rate, I thank you once more from the bottom of my heart for all you've done for the children. Should you have the time and inclination to share another one of your tales, I'm certain they would welcome it with ears and hearts wide open, as would I. Well, isn't that nice? So there we go. D'Amelio is alive and well and chasing his dreams, and his mother is undead. 3,000 miles beneath Gridania, shambling around looking for her lost son in some kind of nightmare fever dream. Wow. And with that, everyone, YouTube at home, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, all that, all that stuff. Merry whatever it is, you know, everyone celebrates me at the end of December, and I'm sure you guys are all having a delightful time, and uh, thank you all so much for the, the support this year. Your love and support means the absolute world to me, and I'll see you all next year for uh, hopefully a fantastic 2017. Thanks for watching! Real talk guys, outros are much harder when you've got a, when you've got a face cam, they become a lot more awkward.